I've been creating animations in geometry nodes for several years and I keep running into the same problem. But I recently found a bulletproof solution to the problem that not only fixes the problem, but opens up some really cool creative opportunities while building animations. So what is the problem? When adding materials to objects in geometry nodes that are instanced, it adds that same repeating pattern to all of them, creating this really ugly repetition. Now, in my old tutorials, what I would do is use the object coordinate and select the object, which would make the material kind of treat all of the instances like they were one big object, spreading that texture across each one of them. But that created an even bigger problem. When I wanted any of those objects to move, the texture would also move on top of those objects, and it was really annoying creating another limitation. What is my new bulletproof solution? What I have to do is get geometry nodes to assign a unique value to each individual object that I can then use in the shading to randomize the texture on all of the objects so that each object doesn't have the same exact pattern, and when those objects move, the pattern is locked in on that object. So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do that on any project you want. And I know a lot of you are gonna ask how I created this thumbnail. We are gonna create this thumbnail and show you how this randomness information can not only be used as a solution, but also a really cool creative opportunity. So let's get into it. Let's look at this like it's a three-step process. Step one is generate our instanced objects. Step two, assign a value to each one of those objects. And step three, use that value to randomize the pattern on each one of our objects. Before we get into that, I just released three exclusive tutorials on my Patreon right now, diving into some really, really cool motion graphics techniques. We're improving on some old techniques as well as creating some brand new animations that are really gonna teach you so many different techniques on how to make really cool, really interesting motion graphics. If you wanna check out this three tutorial series on my Patreon, as well as everything else that I've ever released on Patreon, you can check it out linked in description. All right, so if you want to follow along, we're gonna go ahead and and get just a random plane, head into geometry nodes, click new, we're gonna delete the input, we're gonna add a grid that we can instance some objects on. So we'll give it a size right around four and vertices of four as well. We're gonna create our instance on points node, get our icosphere, and plug that into instance so that we can now have those objects that we can see that repeating pattern on. So let's build a material that shows that repeating pattern. We'll get a set material right over here, create a new material and grab it. Head to shading and just go ahead and plug in a noise texture right on the base color. And you'll already notice a repeating pattern on all of our spheres and even a color ramp will really exaggerate the fact that there is a repeating pattern on all of these objects. So like I said, each object needs to have its own individual value. What does that mean? If we switch this texture over to 4D, we have this ability to randomize the pattern. So what if each one of these objects had their own unique W value? So let's go ahead and assign a unique value to each one of these spheres. We'll go back to geometry nodes, and right after those instances were created, we can go ahead and create an attribute. We'll do a store named attribute and literally call it whatever you want. I'll just use the letter R. I want it to recognize that there are instances. And I'm gonna throw a random value node on here. You can also use textures like waves and noise textures and Voronoi, but we'll just use a random value. I'm gonna go back to shading and grab that attribute. So its name is R and I want it to recognize the instancer. So if I just go ahead and view it, Notice there's slight differences in color. Now, if you didn't know, black and white values in Blender also equal numerical values. Let me show you. See on this color ramp, there's black and white. If I were to click on the white, you can see value of one. But if I bring this over, you could see it's a slightly different gray and that value is a number, 0.39 or 0.243 or 0.8. And you can see how each of these spheres now has their own individual value or own individual number. So all I have to do now is plug those values into the W. So now, instead of one individual value being assigned to all of these at once, 
I get to say, hey, use each one of their own value. And you can see how it slightly changes it on all of them. We can also use a math node set to multiply add and exaggerate that effect even more. So here it is with all of them having the same repeating pattern. And then as we implement that value, it starts to change it on all of them. And as you can see, if I move these objects around, they, the texture stays in place, removing that problem that I used to have. So how is this useful? So in this case of the thumbnail that we're about to make, I wanted that roughness on each one of the spheres to have a different pattern. So I had to create a unique value for each one of those spheres so that the pattern doesn't repeat on every single one of those spheres. If that still didn't make sense and you want more context, let's go ahead and build this scene and I'll show you why this is so valuable. All right, so let's go ahead and build that guy um, as quick as we can. So we're gonna create a plane, head back into geometry nodes, click new. Let's go ahead and get in a icosphere where all of our objects are going to be inside of the icosphere. So let's just go ahead and bring the radius up bring up the subdivisions. We're gonna make it a mesh to volume and do a distribute points inside the volume. So there we go, we can go ahead and add a bunch of spheres inside of this thing. So I'm gonna bring the density down and get a instance on points. We're gonna go ahead, add our instance on points, use icospheres to instance on those points. And now we have this, but all these guys are kind of running into each other. So what we can do is get a merge by distance node, and that is going to go ahead and bring that distance up. It's gonna go ahead and make sure that these objects are not touching. Then we can bring up the density of this scene and maybe go ahead and bring up the radius of this guy. Play with that distance again until we kind of like what we have. So there we go. We have some spheres here, some of them touching, some of them not. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my camera to view it from this angle right here. So now we have all these spheres. We can get a set shade smooth node and start to add some materials. So we're gonna get a set material node and we're gonna cr create that glass material. So go over here and bring your transmission all the way over here, maybe bring your roughness down a little bit and grab that material. Let's head into shading. Now I want to use cycles for this animation. So we're gonna go here to cycles and I'm gonna view it in the cycles viewer. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and get a light right here. I'm gonna hit G and move the light up and bring up the brightness and maybe bring up the scale as well. So like I said, I want the roughness to be all over these objects. So what I'm gonna do is get a noise texture here, get a color ramp and we'll plug that right into the roughness. I'm gonna use color so that it's a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna hit control T, use the object coordinate and then we can bring in that roughness information until we get something that looks really cool. So you can see we have some roughness information. What I always love to do is to get a second noise texture and use the color socket again to get a more interesting looking noise pattern on all of our objects. So we can do something like this. Now, because I know historically the, ob the pattern is gonna repeat and see this here, you can see it here, here the pattern is repeating on all of our objects and we, we don't want that. Maybe I can go ahead, maybe I can bring down the scale again just to get an interesting looking pattern on all of our objects here. So let's go ahead and randomize the noise pattern on all of these objects so that we can get it to look a little bit better. So back to geometry nodes, we'll do that same exact thing right after we've created our instances. We're gonna get that store named attribute node. R, we're gonna use a random value, get it to recognize instances and we'll plug that right there. Let's head back into shading and grab it. So I'm just gonna view this texture here, grab our attribute node. We're gonna switch, we're gonna switch this noise texture over to 4D. You can obviously see lots of repeating. We're gonna click on type in R, switch this over to the instancer and plug factor right into W. And it's gonna change it up we're gonna get a math node and we'll set that to multiply add and just bring up that multiplier to just make sure there is no values that are too similar to each other. 
now we can go ahead and view our new noise pattern. I'm gonna bring this black portion of the color ramp up a little bit so there's no perfectly clear glossy sections. In the world brightness, I'm gonna bring it down to black. So now we have this, and then in the volume section, give yourself a principled volume node and then just bring it to something right about there. And then our area light can be something like 3000 on the brightness and then we can bring that density maybe a little bit farther down, just barely, something like this. Now to make it look a little bit more like maybe these sci-fi eggs or just something weird, I want actually some spheres to be on the inside of all of these objects. So let's go back to geometry nodes and use that same information. So we're gonna get a join geometry node. I wanna get a instance on points and I'm gonna go view the wireframe really quick. I'm gonna plug the merge by distance into points. I'm gonna du duplicate the icosphere, plug it here, and then plug the instance on points into the join geometry. And then if we bring our radius down, we will have these objects inside of our glass and you can kind of see them now. But I want a few of them to glow. And so this is when that random value information is gonna actually open up some cool creative opportunities. So what I wanna do is the same thing. We're gonna get that store named attribute. Let's just go ahead and plug that same random value node into value and we'll just call this one L for light and then go ahead and tell it, recognize the instances. We're gonna get a new set material node and in this case, we're gonna hit the plus icon on the materials and give this a emission node and just make it green for now and we'll grab it there. And you'll notice, okay, now we have these really cool looking green spheres in our spheres. So if we go to the shading, we can go ahead and grab that attribute. I'm gonna go ahead and get a mix color node, plug it here, get one to be black and one to be white. And we're gonna plug this factor into that, but we need to click L and instancer to grab that. So now you can see some of these objects turned off, their light turned off. So what we can do is get a color ramp to exaggerate that effect. So now if we bring the white portion in, some of them turn on, some of them turn off. And that, that is what we want. And then now what we can do here on the white portion, we could just pick a color, but the reason why I used a mix RGB is so that I can use a layer weight node a color ramp to give the light some character. So we can plug that right into the green portion, grab that same green that we wanted, and then we can just bring up the strength of the light, play with the blend so that it's more of kind of a ring like this. So we can bring these far brighter than they are right now. Pretty bright. Maybe bring it over to a B spline and then bring in that B spline just to give it a much more satisfying looking green sort of circle. Now we can go here in the area light, give it a nice blue, something like this, and then maybe 5,000 on the brightness, and then just make this light quite a bit bigger and maybe 8,000 on the brightness. And we've now created that scene that's in the thumbnail, and then I just added a text with some emission in the background. So let's go ahead and make this thing glow and then we can be finished. So in the compositor, I'm gonna click use nodes. We're gonna get in a glare node and then bring your mix down to like 0.6. We can head back to layout, go to cycles and also view that glare. So you can see how it's a little bit shiny here and there. We'll go back to the compositor, switch this over to bloom and you can see we have this glare. So we can go ahead and just edit the, the glare in our compositor by bringing up a new window and grabbing the compositor. And then you can just bring that mix down to something like this. And we now have this glowing portion. So just to reiterate why this random value not only create not only is useful, but creates these interesting opportunities, is we were able to use the random value to turn, have some of these objects have this glowing green light and some of them not have the, growing, the glowing green light and create some really interesting creative opportunities 
for a really cool sci-fi looking scene. So there you go. So there you go. That's how we can use random value information to solve this really annoying repeating pattern on instances problem. It's an issue that I've hated for the longest time, but now I'm not constricted anymore. So it's really, really cool and really useful. If you do want to check out this series of tutorials I mentioned in the beginning on my Patreon, you can check out my Patreon right now linked in the description. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching.